Hello world, Dino Mega here. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step making a new quest. We're gonna continue from where we left off in the installation and setup video. So if you've not done that one yet, I recommend starting there. Now before we dive into our data table, it's a good idea to have a general idea of what you want your quest to do. For this example, I wanna start the quest at an NPC, then interact with these three cubes, and then complete the quest at another NPC. And then we'll expand on it from there. For our NPC, we can just drag and drop a copy of our BP underscore third person character, but really it can be anything. I'm gonna drop this one here and this is where I want to start our quest and let's duplicate it and move it up here and while we're at it let's change it to Manny and this one is where we're going to complete our quest then we're just going to use these three cubes for our objectives to interact with and that's a good enough start for our plan let's bring it to life now Navigate to the Blueprints Variables Data Tables folder and open the DT underscore quest data table. This data table is where we store all of our quest information. As you can see, there's a number of quests already in here and these are the ones that are from our demo world. Dino, can I just delete all these? Uh, I recommend holding off for now, Timmy. You can delete them, but if you do, the examples in the demo world will no longer work. And you don't have to worry about them consuming resources in your level. They are set up to only load in the demo world. Now to add a new quest to our data table, we click this add row button, and this will add a new row to the already existing ones. Now let's go ahead and set our row name to example, since this is our example quest. And this row name is how we will identify this quest if we ever need to interact with it from Blueprint in the future. Now for each quest in our data table, we have all these options. And this is where we will be defining and creating the logic for our quest. You can learn all about each of these variables in the documentation, but I'll give you a quick overhead of each as we walk through building this first quest. Our first variable is the quest type, and this is how we control the styling, and in some cases, the functionality. And to learn more about the differences between each type, you can refer to the quest type page in the documentation. For now, let's keep it simple and just select main story quest. Our quest accept at variable is the actor tag on our actor in our level that we want to associate with the starting point of this quest. And we know which actor we want, but currently the actor does not have have any tags. So let's go ahead and add one. And for this one, I'm going to call it example start. Then for the NPC we want to complete the quest at, let's add a tag to that one called example end. Now let's head back to our data table and add both of these values to the quest accept at and quest complete at variables. Now if we press play, we can see our quest available indicator light up on our actor. Now before we interact with our actor, let's add some text to our quest. And the quest text variable is the next section in our data table. And this is where we'll define our text. And it consists of a title, description, and the ability to specify special text that is shown based on the specific quest state. And we can add something for available, in progress, and ready to turn in, as these are all the states that the quest window is currently visible for to our player. Now go ahead and press play and interact with our quest giver to see our quest window. And the NPC name and the scene capture component are something we'll set up in another video related to the quest actors. So if you'd like to know how to handle those now, make sure you check out the quest actor page in the documentation. And if you accept the quest, you'll notice it's ready to turn in right away. And this is because we have not added any objectives to it. You can go ahead and turn it in right now if you'd like. During development, you're going to want to frequently reset quests. An easy way to do this is to use the included buttons in the demo map helpers buttons folder. For example, our delete player save button will wipe all quest data for us. Let's go ahead and drop a copy of our delete player save button into the level. Then press play and jump on it to reset your player. You'll see that the quest becomes available to you again right away. Next up, we have our quest options. These are the options that are specific to this quest. And there's a lot of functionality built into each of these and showing them all off in depth would make this video quite long. And since I'm just giving a brief overview of the different sections in this video, if you really wanna learn more about each of these options, make sure to check out the quest option page in the documentation. Our quest prerequisites are the conditions that need to be satisfied before we can start a quest. And we won't be using this feature in this example, but I did wanna show you it. And also so you can see that there's many different types of conditions. And some of these conditions might involve other connected systems. I know I keep repeating myself, but if you check the documentation, you'll find detailed explanations of this topic. In the future, I will make more videos to go deeper into each of these topics, but for now, this video is just to help you get started. And remember, using these features is mostly optional. Now for the fun part, our quest objectives are what we want the player to finish to complete the quest. Go ahead and add an objective by clicking the add button next to the quest objective section. Then expand the entry that it added. This is where we define our criteria for our objective. As you can see, our first option is our objective type. And there are a few different options for you, and each one will give you a description of how to use it. In this quest, I want to keep it simple and use the interact objective. So let's start there and select the interact objective type. For the objective title, enter some short descriptive text. This text will be shown in the quest window as well as on the quest tracker on the side of the screen target data, this is where we can define some criteria specific to our targets for this objective. For our interact objective, we need to specify our tag, and this is the tag to our actor in our level. Let's go ahead and set it to box here, and then back in our level, select all three of the cubes, and from the details panel, add a tag to them all with the word box, just like we added in our data table. We also want the player to interact with three of them, so let's add the count field to our target data as well. And for the value, set it to three. 
Lastly, we want to make sure our player can only interact with each of our actors once. And we can control this with the Require Unique Actors option under the Objective options. Go ahead and enable it and give your quest a try. You should now see the objective indicators appear above our boxes when you accept the quest, and you must run up and interact with each one to complete the objective. Then finally, once the quest is complete, you can turn it in. Let's add another objective. This time, let's use the Travel To one. And we're going to require our player to travel to our complete at actor. For the target data, select tag, then enter the tag we added to our complete at actor. Example dash end. And when we start our quest, we will see we have a second objective now. By default, we can complete our objectives in any order, but if you'd like to add some control and require them to be completed in order, jump back to our objective options and enable the require last options. These control completing and showing the objective in the UI by acquiring the previous in the stack to be completed first. After enabling this just for our travel objective, give your quest another try. You should not only see the travel to objective once you complete the interact objective. There are some other cool options in here. One worth mentioning is that you can convert your counts into percentages when they're shown in the UI. You can also apply custom indicators for specific objectives. And make sure you check out the quest objectives in the docs for a more detailed breakdown of each of these options. I'm going to unset these options and just leave the require unique actors one for now. And continuing with our objectives, we can also define prerequisites, which work just like the quest ones, but they're here specifically to control if the objective can be completed. We also have our objective complete events, which let us launch quest events when an objective is completed. And we'll talk more about the quest events in a minute. We can also give items and numeric rewards to the player when a quest is completed and turned in. And quest rewards is something I'll show you more about in the integration guide, as it does require connecting an inventory system to use. Next up, we have quest events, which allow us to inject logic into our world based on the state of the quest. And to use it, we just need to first define which state we want to use. Since our list is empty, click the Add button and then select the state in progress, as this is the state that is set as soon as the player accepts the quest. Next, add an element to the list for this state. This is where we will define the events we want to run when the state is set for this quest. The event handler is the blueprint that will be spawned. A number of examples are included for you. And to make your own, you just make a child of the BP underscore quest event. And detailed instructions for making events can be found in the doc. But for now, let's select the one I know a lot of you are excited for, our quest timer. And this one will let us add a timer to our quest that will automatically fail if the player does not complete in time. Event data is how we configure our event handler for this particular instance. The included examples have a number of different variables to power how they work, and these variables are set through this event data. For our quest timer, let's take a look at how the demo world smash time quest handles it. As you can see, there are a few different variables that go into initializing it, and not all of them are required, but let's copy them with shift right click, and then we'll paste them back on our quest timer for our quest with shift left click. I'm going to change the seconds, which is how many seconds this timer starts at. And I'm also going to change the label in the UI to better reflect what the timer is for. This run on reload option will rerun the quest event if the player restarts and this quest state is still in the state, which is something we want for ours, so let's enable that. Let's press play and check it out. As you can see, as soon as the game loads, our timer is shown and starts counting down. When it hits zero, it fails the quest. Now let's change our seconds to give our player some more time to complete the quest. Then give it another try. By default, the quest timer will stop whenever the quest state changes from in progress to anything else. You can also manually stop timers if you need using included blueprint functions, as well as by initiating another quest event for quest timers with the action stop. For example, if you want to stop a timer if an objective is completed. And this is just a simple example of the quest timers. There's a lot of functionality built into it. The idea was to really stress the potential behind using something like a quest event. The docs or quest events will give you a good breakdown of all its features. Next is our quest and levels array, and this can be used to define a list of what levels your quest is in. And if you leave it blank, the system will treat your quest as a cross-level quest, meaning that it will search for your quest in every level that it loads. If you recall, I mentioned how our demo world quests only load in the demo world. That is because it's utilizing this variable. If your quest is in multiple levels, you can also define them all here. This is an optimization effort, which when used will keep the quest system initializer from having to check for this quest if it's not part of the level. Quest data is there for your own uses. If for some reason you need to specify some kind of key value pair specific to a quest, which might differ from other quests, then this might be ideal for you. Your quest data is made available to you when you get the quest data from the player state component. Our last variable in the quest data table is our quest log group, and this variable lets us define the grouping in our quest log for our quest. For example, if we set a value here, we can now see it in the quest log. And when we duplicate our quest and accept both, we see both of them in our quest log in the same group. 
Then if we change one to another label and look again, now they are in different groups. Hopefully by this point you have a good idea of how quests are made in the system as well as can see the flexibility behind it. There are a lot of features, but just remember nearly every feature is optional. A quest can be as simple or as complex as you need them to be. In the next video I'll teach you how to interact with the quest system from Blueprint. Thanks for watching and good luck with your game. Thank <laughs> you.